The Cat Who Loved Mozart by Patricia Austin, illustrated by Henry Sorensen. To my father who gave me my love of literature and in memory of my mother who gave me the gift of music and of Dusty, the real cat. Jennifer dreamed of being a great pianist and playing concerts all over the world. She worried because she was already nine. Mozart was only five when he began. One afternoon on her way back from her piano lesson, Jennifer found a stray cat. He was a gray and white with a very pink nose. So who do we have here? Her father asked. Amadeus, she said. Named after Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Her father raised an eyebrow, waiting for an explanation. He just followed me home, Jennifer added quickly. Well, he hadn't exactly followed her home. When she tried to pick him up, he scratched her. In fact, he only followed her. He only followed after much cajoling. He must have been very hungry. She walked her bike home, cooing to the cat the entire way. But Jennifer didn't admit that part. Since they didn't have any cat food, Jennifer fed Amadeus leftovers. He gobbled tuna salad. He ate some crumbs from the floor, munched scraps in the drain, and tried to get into the refrigerator. When he meowed at Jennifer's feet, she scooped him up in her arms. I knew you'd come around, she told him. In answer, he dug his claws into her hands and leaped quickly to the floor. Later, she tried to play with Amadeus. All cats like to play, she told him. She pulled a, sh a shoestring along the floor. Amadeus, uh, Amadeus's eyes got big. He crouched low, wiggled, then pounced. She tossed the string. It hit him. Amadeus blinked, washed the end of his nose, and sulked. Jennifer tried to spoil Amadeus. She bought him his own brush, but he hated being brushed. She bought him catnip, but it made him sneeze. She bought him a ball, but he would not play with it. One night after Jennifer was asleep, Amadeus curled up next to her in bed. But in the morning, a sleepy Jennifer stepped on his tail. Amadeus howled and hid under the living room couch. Jennifer, her father said after breakfast, you haven't practiced for more than a week, and you have that sonata contest coming up. Jennifer knew her father was right. She might as well practice since she wasn't having much luck making friends with her new pet. At the sound of the first notes, Amadeus cocked his ears and listened. Slowly, he crept closer to the piano bench. Before Jennifer finished Mozart's sonata in C, Amadeus jumped up next to her. She glanced at him without moving her head, afraid to breathe for fear he jumped down. She didn't pick him up or even pet him. She just kept playing, and Amadeus never moved. With the contest just two months away, Jennifer practiced for hours day after day, and now whenever she practiced, Amadou sat next to her. At first, she made a lot of mistakes. Every time she played a wrong note, Amadou's ears twitched. But when the notes were sweet, Amadou nestled closer. 
After a while, he didn't even mind when Jennifer scratched his head or tickled his chin. One day, on the day of the contest, Jennifer was scared. Backstage, she squeezed her father's hand. I don't think I'm ready yet, she whispered. Don't worry, he said. Play it for Amadeus. Jennifer smiled, thinking of her cat waiting at home in his favorite spot, the piano bench. When it was her turn to play, she headed confidently to the piano. She pretended Amadeus was curled up against her, listening. Her fingers danced over the keys, never making a mistake. That night, Jennifer listened to a recording of Mozart's sonatas. She clutched her first place ribbon, imagining the other music she would play with the help of Amadeus. For whenever Amadeus heard the family, the family strains of Mozart's music, he would hop up beside Jennifer, snuggle close, and purr in time with the music, of course. About the author, Patricia Austin is an associate professor of children's literature at the University of New Orleans and has written numerous articles about writing and children's literature for education journals. She lives in New Orleans, Louisiana with her four cat cats. Henry Sorensen has illustrated numerous books for children, including Hurricane by Jonathan London. He lives in Denmark.